Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and you are in exactly the right place. If you want to find out just how well these new Ultimate Eye Look palettes from Revolution perform. Well, how this particular colour variant does. This is the Hidden Jewels option. So, if you want to find out what it looks like on the inside, how well or otherwise it performs, and what this looks like in a glorious Technicolor. And then my darlings, as I have said for many years now, and I'm oft hearing it echoed, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay, I will have shown you the outside of this in the intro. Oh, I've got such an itchy nose. I blame it on the pollen. Uh, this is the Revolution Pro Ultimate Eye Look Palette. I think they released about six different colourways. This one is called Hidden Jewels. It's got a very jewel encrusted 3D texturised lid on it. And then when you open it, it does have a mirror, but it's a little quad. And I have swatched them on the back of my hand, therefore you can just about see that, that creamy colour. <laughs> no, I haven't been to a salon. There's still no salons open. These are stick on nails. They're glued on. There's a very good chance one or more will ping off during this film. Place your bets. Place your bets now how many of these I'm going to lose my temper with today. So, looking at these swatches, they don't. I suppose the lilac is a satin, but the other three all look to be matte. So that's going to be quite an interesting colour combination. Um, they're not all like this. I know some of them have got sort of two mattes, one metallic, one shimmer, um, or one satin. But this definitely seems to be three mattes and a satin. So. We're going to see how this applies. Now, this is still a teaching channel, and as such, I go at a speed that beginners can keep up with. I don't skip any of the blending, it's all in. Uh, the only bit that I do off camera is foundation and putting base products and stuff on because otherwise, the film's going to be over an hour long. So, the most important thing in terms of this is reviewing this palette, seeing how it performs. This was a tenner, so quite expensive for four shades. However, I'm guessing a lot of that money has gone in terms of packaging because this is much higher quality packaging than you would normally expect from Revolution. It is the Revolution Pro range, so I'm guessing that's why. One thing I did notice with this when it first arrived is it absolutely honked. Um, I couldn't work out whether it was the top that stank or whether it was the glue holding the shadows in place here. Hubby sniffed it and went, oh, contact adhesive. So basically all I did was leave it slightly open like that on the side where it couldn't get bashed about. Uh, just let it air for a couple of days. There's a slight 
Can you still smell that on the lid? A little bit. So there's a slight Remember residue. Remember kids, sniff glue responsibly and only for educational purposes. No, don't <laughs> sniff glue. <laughs> the godchildren could be watching this. It was a joke. No. It was meant to be funny. It wasn't. <laughs> Oh, okay. Misplaced humour. Husbands. <laughs> right, so, uh, if you do wear this, beware of the fact. You might need to air it out a couple of days uh, yeah. before you use it. And now, it comes with bad jokes. <laughs> no, it's just my husband comes with the bad jokes. <laughs> Unfortunately, his little brother has developed into doing the bad jokes and the puns. And even though we're in quarantine, lockdown, and can't see them, he still sends me his puns every day. So I get it from both of the boys. Anyway, um, from very early on in my channel, I've discussed the difference between deep set eyes and hooded lids. They have very similar issues in terms to application of and wear of eyeshadow but they're actually very different in terms of the workarounds for each type of eye. Um, I have heard other channels starting to mention this now since I've been making such a thing of it on mine. Not entirely sure all of them know what they're talking about mind because I did an awful lot of research into this to make sure I knew what I was talking about before I started chatting to you about it. So, I'm about to insert a clip just here. Uh, for those of you who've not um, been on my channel before, it will be very up close and personal. It will literally just be my eyes. So, please don't scream at the shock of suddenly going, whoa, hello. Um, I will talk you through how to work out which eye shape you have and how to work around that eye shape to get the best looking finish for your eyeshadows and the longest wearing finish. Okay, once that's done I'll be back to apply some of these to my lids. So, here's the clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crime Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily, or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. 
So I follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So. What are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. And I'm back. Right, okay. Um, I'm going to go in with one of the small brushes from the AliExpress set that I recommend. If I hold it up here, you can see what I mean. It's quite a because whatever the width of the brush head, that's how far it will blend the colour out. So I'm going to start with quite a small one because we are dealing with you know quite deep colours because I want to try and keep these two for the lid. So I'm going to start off. I think with the purple. This could be a mistake. We will find out very shortly. Uh, not too much kick up in pan, but it, yeah, you do need to tap your brush off. Look, you can see, just if it will focus. Hello, hello, focus, do your job. There you go. So you can see the kick up in the pan there. It's not an issue, at least you know you're getting pigment on your brush and you can go back in and pick that loose pigment up um, when we need to add more pigment uh, to build the colour up. So, I'm going to start lower down than I would normally do because obviously I want to try and blend this out and up the eye. So as always, holding the brush right at the very end. Wow, that's got some pigment there. And very lightly, little circular movements, blending in towards the nose. Now the blending that we're doing here is, is the Viennese waltz of the blend. So you do natural turns towards the nose, a bit of a fleckle in the middle, and then you reverse the turns to come back out again. And the reason we do this is because, quite literally, in a couple of weeks' time, I will be 46 years old. I've also lost 14 stone, which is 200 and some odd pounds. So the skin on my eyelids moves. And by doing this little circular movement, what we're doing is very gently moving that skin around on our eyelid to ensure that when we blend it, we don't get barcoding or tiger striping. 
I'm waiting for the hubby to start singing. Oh, sorry, what, what, what should I be singing? Well, I just said about tiger striping. <laughs> oh, how does it go? I saw a tiger. tiger. Tiger saw a man. We've kind of fallen down the Joe Exotic music rabbit hole. It's alright because I found a tiger loaf today and I started singing that song in my head when I picked it up. Thankfully he wasn't singing it out loud in the middle of Morrison's otherwise I think he would have uh, been escorted from the premises. Right, you can see I did not go back into that at all and that has just blended out all the way up without any issues at all. So it's super pigmented and it's really, really nice blending as well. It's not gone patchy on me at all. Now, when I do this eye, you can see here I've got some very, very deep creasing. This is the iron blinding. Um, it's where it got pulled around an awful lot when I was, you know, five, six years old at the ophthalmic hospital. So I do have to uh, treat this eye slightly differently. But when I get to that point, I will absolutely explain it to you and talk you through what I'm doing. But the reason we hold the brush right at the very end like this is to put as little pressure on our eyelids as possible. Because you can see, my eyelid being pulled around 40 odd years ago has left me with deep creasing. So I'm just doing the same with this side and slowly blending and buffing it up the eye might have to dip back in and grab a little bit more of that loose pigment from the top. If you're adding more pigment in, always start adding it from the outside edge. Because it's so much easier to blend out if you suddenly get a warmth of it over here than it is this side, because your nose tends to get in the way. So again, just leaving a, you know, a fair a fair sort of five to eight mil gap between my brows and the colour. I might go in in just a minute, in fact I think I will. I'm going to get a, a brush that's a little fluffier than this. I'm just going to use a microfiber cloth to clean this brush off because I'm going to use this one again in a minute uh, with that deep blue. Oh. Yeah, it is a deep blue. It's it's not in it's not a violet. It is absolutely a deep blue. But I'm going to get a brush that's a little bit of a more blown out head on it like this. This is one of my Royal and Lang Nickel Chic Pro crease brushes. Again, this linked in the description box, you will find uh, which brushes do I recommend film. Okay, I'm just going to gently pop this into the cream colour. And I'm just going to use this just on the edge here to soften and lighten and blend out this top edge because it's such a a deeper shade. Normally I would have gone in with a lighter shade going this far up the lid. But with this quad you don't actually have too much of a choice in that so just using that to buff all around those edges and really soften up all the way around. You see the difference that makes with the two. Just very, very light, gentle buffing. 
just to help blend that edge out a little bit more lighten the tone a bit because I will admit I was not expecting that burgundy that, that sort of it's almost like a mulberry purple isn't it this one I was not expecting it to have quite that amount of pigmentation on it not that I'm complaining about having good pigment but it is something to be wary of particularly for first time users but as always I will always show you the easy way to do this okay just I, I just I sit back and I check that both sides look the same because unlike a certain Jimmy Chuck I do not Photoshop my results. What you see is what you get and it's absolutely achievable. Who's Jimmy Chuck? Uh. Hi sisters. Oh, if you mention his name. Is he like the camp version of Chuck Norris? No. If you mention his name on YouTube in a less than flattering manner your film doesn't get pushed out to as many people. Really? Really. Wow. He really is the Chuck Norris of YouTube. <laughs> Chuck something of YouTube. Right. Going back in with this brush. And I'm going to go in with this deep blue here. It does almost look like an indigo, like a blue jeans colour when you compare it to this one. So again, I'm just going to dip the tip of the brush into this and then just a right where my natural crease falls if you've moved your crease up obviously follow that through so I'm just doing circular movements till halfway along and then just windscreen wipering to pull all that pigment across and then gently building up at the corner here and just blending that into the first shade that we used just to deepen up and give us a little bit more definition on the eye and I'm going to bring this down onto the outer third of my lid how are you all coping at the moment are you still on lockdown where you are you guys just had hours extended for three more weeks so I'm going to be very selfish when I say this next bit. So that means that our wedding anniversary this week we couldn't go out for and my birthday in just under two weeks time I can't go out for. I don't go out much nowadays anyway. The last time I actually went out, out, um, was back at the beginning of February to the karaoke. So I'm definitely getting withdrawal symptoms. Not that I went out very much anyway. I used to go out sort of. I used to do sort of one karaoke a month. I would try to do one karaoke a month. Um, and we'd go out for a meal a couple of times a month, you know. Pop up and see the brother-in-law, have games nights and things. But at the moment I'm literally just, the only time I'm leaving the house now is to drive us to the supermarket to do our weekly food shop and back again. So obviously with my mobility I can't really 
go out and about and walk like I want to. And by the time hubby gets in from work, the last thing he's going to want to do is get the wheelchair out and push me along the road. Bless him, he's knackered by the time he gets in. Well, I'll carry you if you like. Then we'll both <coughs> have knackered backs. If you piggyback, you can shout wee and run down the road. No. Or I'll run down the road. <laughs> we can make a box cart and pull you along on it. It'll be fun. <clears throat> right, as you can see, I'm doing the same this side. Now, if you do get a patch like I'm getting here, where as you're blending, it's almost leaving a lighter area in the middle. Now, I get that because I get very, very dry skin just here. Finish your blending so the edges are as blended out as you want them to be. And then just dip the very tip of the bristles into the pigment and gently tap to fill the pigment in and just keep moving that brush <coughs> around just tap 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 in like so. This is actually turning into a very very nice look. So, clean that brush off. And now I'm going to go in, this is a Morphe M321. Um, am I going to wet the pigment or not? No, I'm going to try it without wetting it first. I'm going to go into that satin lilac-y, lavender kind of colour. I'm expecting quite a bit of fallout from this. So let's just see how this applies. I like to, the first time I'm using the palette, not do a cut crease because I want to see whether it has the opacity to cover the area concerned and that absolutely has even without wetting it. I'm going to use the very tip of the bristles now just to blend and smudge the end into the deeper blue that we used there. Dust away any, any fallout, and I'm going to do the same with the other eye. But with this eye, because of that deep creasing, I do have to do it slightly differently. Because if I don't stretch the lid out, this pigment will um, just just pack loosely into the creasing and will then start falling into my eye and falling down my face. So, if like me, you've got these super deep creases, you literally only pull it out as far as you need to, to straighten the creases out. Apply the pigment as quickly as you can and then let go of the lid so that you're not stretching it out any further than you absolutely have to and you're letting go as quickly as possible and I'll just finish popping that on the rest of that lid and again tips of the bristles to blend it into the blue just there on that outer edge that actually is turning into a very, very pretty look indeed. I always get more fallout this side because um, obviously where this eye was pulled around, the skin on this lid is considerably looser. Um, but, you know, I know 20 year olds who've always been slim, 
that have loose eyelids. It can just be a genetic thing. Right. I am going to pause you while I pop some base products on and then I will be back to finish this eye look with you. Now, I'm going to have to wait till the next time I press record to talk to you but for you my darlings it will be absolutely instant. So I'll see you right now. Hello, I am back. Um, I get asked quite a bit about my colourful brows. Um, at the moment I'm, I've just soaked them into place using the Revolution soap brow thing. You don't have to use the, the brow kit, you can just get a clean spoolie and a bar of soap basically. Um, I use that because it's got a really nice little mini toothbrush type brush in it. And then just get a, an angled brush like this. Dip it into whichever powder you want. I'm going to go into the first purple that I used. And then just carefully add it to the brows. I have been using pomades to do this. Um, but a lot of people were saying they were finding it difficult to get hold of the pomades. Revolution seems to have um, stopped selling the colourful ones. I don't know whether they're reformulating them or repackaging them or, you know, if they're just discontinuing the line because it didn't sell very well. I don't know. Uh, but this is a way that you can always get your brows to match. your look because you can literally use one of the eyeshadows that you've used in the look to shade the brows and because the soap I didn't wet the soap I applied the soap dry but because it's still a little bit sticky it clings onto the powder so you don't get into a right mucking fuddle, as my granddad would have said. I always get one brow that goes better than the other. Probably because one of them got plucked more than the other during the 80s and 90s. Ooh, I did over pluck mine. I think we all did though, didn't we? If your brow didn't look like it was drawn on with a pencil, it just it wasn't thin enough, was it? My brows are still recovering now. Used to have lovely bushy brows. They're coming back though, slowly. But that is how you can always get your brows to match your look. Right, I'm going to grab this flat top brush and I'm going to go into the indigo-y blue. Just dip the tip of it and then run it very carefully along my lower lash line. Now I can't ten, I can't really put anything in my waterline because it makes my eyes run too much. I've always had very very watery eyes even as a kid. Uh, you add hay fever and fibro into the mix and putting anything on the waterline is basically like asking for Niagara Falls. But you can still get an impactful look by smoking out your lower lash line instead. So starting off with a, a deeper shade and then you can use a smudger brush but I love this brush. This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. 
flat topped but chunky so it's great for buffing out and I'm going to go into the satin sort of lavender that I used on the lid and I'm just going to use that just to buff all the way along and just soften that lower lash line yes I'm flinching this side because I have no peripheral vision this is the eye that I'm blinding I don't have my contact lens in my other eye so at the moment I'm relying very much on muscle memory and a viewfinder that's far too far away for comfort um, to not poke myself in the eye um, regular viewers will tell you how regularly I fail at that task um, now normally I would choose something from the palette for inner corner but the only thing really we've got is this matte cream which I don't really want to use so I'm going to grab a highlight and I'm going to use my Kaleidos one because I haven't used this one very much yet since I got it this is she said trying to get the damn thing out of the box I love the fact they package it so well but I hate the fact they package it so well. Anybody else have that problem? Just me then? Yeah? Okay. Fair enough. Cardboard box. <coughs> right. So I go for the number two, which is Star Surfer. Oh, that was the back of it. That's the front of it. And it's... Uh, beautiful pinky peachy shift to it which I think will actually pick up on the lilac and hopefully bring more of that out so I pop a little bit of this onto the inner corner I like to bring mine along underneath the uh, And just sort of blend it in with what I've run along along the tear duct and blend it into the colour that I've run under the eye just because I think for my eye shape it finishes it off nicely this is just a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay about a decade ago I'm just going to pop a little bit of this up under the brow Just to help lift that because apparently along with our boobies and everything else ladies and gents our brows decide to descend as we get older as well and they're lovely right darlings I'm going to pause you for one last time I am going to chuck a crap ton that is a technical term of this highlight over my face I'll apply some mascara choose a lipstick do something with the hair I'll be back with my finished looks and my final first impression thoughts. Don't go anywhere. I am back. Uh, I used my little mini It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. And I used my Colourpop X Sophia Nygaard lipstick in Mrs Norris. To finish the look off and obviously same highlighter that I've just shown you so what are my first impressions on this quad uh, extremely pigmented extremely easy to blend uh, actually a very a good color choice they actually worked better together than I was expecting. I would have liked there to have been at least one proper shimmer in here though rather than that lavender one being a satin. Um, that's, that's the main drawback with this particular 
quad. As I was saying, some of the other quads do have shimmers in them and they have fewer mats. Um, this particular one, Hidden Jewels, however, three mats and a satin. It's workable, it's doable, um, it's produced... The Roller's Bull! <laughs> yes, the husband is still in the kitchen. Um, God, I was trying to thought now, Chris. Sorry. I really have lost my train of thought. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I'm going to throw something at you. I'll hide behind the fridge door. <laughs> um, shimmers. Some are, some have more shimmers than others. Yeah. Um, like I said, this has produced actually a really nice eye look. Um. Obviously with a quad you are restricted to the number of looks you can get from it but you can use any of these shades minus the, the creamy white one um, and do a one and done look similar to one of the looks that I did in the Zodiac series for Aquarius, I think it was the Aquarius planet um, that I did that was the one and done. So you could do that with any of the three colour shades. Do I think it's worth a tenner? If there is a quad that really calls to you, that you don't already have those colours in your collection somewhere, or once these damn lockdowns are done with, you're someone who travels a lot, and want something small, travel friendly, then I'd say yes these are worth it. Am I going to pay a tenner for any of the other colour combinations? No, uh, I'm going to wait until they have a sale and they go down to five quid and then I might pick up the green one or the blue one. Um, but this is very nice. Once lockdowns are over and we can start visiting the in-laws again, um, this will probably go into the makeup bag and become one of the eyeshadow palettes that I take with me. I've got the, the little quad elf, the little long ones. Uh, I've got both of those in there. This may end up joining them, but it's entirely up to you. It, if 10 quid for you is worth it for this, crack on. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily say I'm going to rush out and get all the other shades now at 10 quid. So, that's my thoughts on that particular semi new. It's been out for a while, but it's taking longer to, for anything to get to us at the moment. Uh, semi new eyeshadow palette from Revolution. So, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. Uh, YouTube, so I was just checking and I've still got all the nails, that's amazing. Um, YouTube are still lopping people off left, right, and centre. So, uh, even if I'm still appearing in your news feed, it would be worth double checking that you are still subscribed and that your notification bell is still on. Um, if you're new to my channel, hi, hello, welcome. It's not always this crazy. Usually the husband's at work when I'm filming. <laughs> not today. Well, not today. Um, if you've got this far through the film, there's obviously something about it you enjoyed. So it would be awesome if you two would like to join the 4F family. It's super easy to do. You just hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, ring the notification bell, jump through however many hoops YouTube asks you to jump through now to actually get notifications. And then they might tell you, I don't know, one in every four films that I put up. However, talking of my films that I put up, there are an awful lot in the back catalogue that you can check through. Uh, basically, as I have said, pretty much from the inception of my channel and oft hear it echoed on others. Pick a playlist. 
Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And indulge. Right, my darlings, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.